weekend. Coming up on Chapman News, we cover local Veterans Day memorials as we honor our servicemen and women. Also, two sisters affected by cancer work to bring home some happiness just in time for the holidays. And we sit down with veteran Bill Cook at, to discuss the potential for a new veteran cemetery in Orange County. In bomb threats, the new way to get out of class, hear how authorities are cracking down on this dangerous new trend. Chapman News starts right now. Welcome to Chapman News. I'm Nicole Moy. And I'm Melanie Diarcole. Thank you for joining us. New at noon, we, have, we just went on the air and Orange County judge sentenced both Candace Brito and Vanessa Zavala to six years in state prison for killing Kim Pham. You may recall the story. Last winter outside the Crosby, a Santa Ana nightclub, the three women got into a fight as they were waiting to get into the club. Pham died two days later from injuries sustained in the fight. Brito and Zavala's lawyers argued that Pham threw the first punch, but the jury disagreed. The two women could have received up to 11 years in prison. The case also received attention due to the large amount of recorded cell phone video and the lack of action from bystanders. This past Tuesday, Orange residents gathered at Depot Park to remember the brave heroes in their community who served to protect our freedom. Natalie Aronson has more on the Patriotic Tribute. Across the nation, Veterans Day is a time of remembrance and appreciation, where civilians and service members pay their respects and thank our country's heroes. Whether these residents have a personal connection to a veteran or simply have pride in our nation, the day brings the community together. Being a wife of a Marine, and my son was in the Army, um, I've been involved in the military all my life. We sent 220 letters to celebrities asking for autographed pictures to um, put on the quilt. We wanted to do, as our little tiny community, was to show others that um, if we as a small little group could um, do something for our vets, anybody could. At Depot Park, history comes to life and allows the community to remember firsthand what our service men and women did for our country. It provides uh, the public the history of it. It teaches uh, the kids of what World War II was like. Because nowadays, reading from a book about it, it's not the same as watching uh, History Channel. It's much better uh, listening up front to a veteran. This Veterans Day tribute recognizes the men and women who have sacrificed to serve our country. Men historically began the fight for our nation, but this year the city of Orange recognizes the brave females who did whatever it took to join the fight. Before women were allowed to serve in the military, we found a way to serve. During the American Revolution, quite a few women dressed as men and showed up to serve. Whether it's raising funds or raising awareness, Orange residents are passionate about our veterans and continue to give back to our nation any way that they can. In Orange, this is Natalie Aronson, Chapman News. Kendra Rotunda was this year's keynote speaker and is an Army veteran and Chapman professor. She teaches military and international law. The city of Irvine might be turning 125 acres of the city's great park into a veteran cemetery. Joining us today is former Marine and chair of the Orange County Veterans Memorial Park Committee, Commander Bill Cook. Thank you so much for coming. It's an honor to have you here. So tell us a thank little you. bit about thank you your, oh, of course, thank you, really. <laughs> so tell us a little bit about your military background. I went into the Marine Corps when I was at age 17. Uh, by the time I was 20 years old, I was a Marine Corps sergeant serving in Vietnam, was there for a full tour of 13 months, and was discharged from El Toro in 1968, and had my life in Orange County ever since. Awesome. Well, thank you, and happy Veterans Day, belated Veterans thank Day you. to you. Um, so as an advocate for the Veterans Cemetery that um, is coming to Orange County, what does this mean to you, um, fellow veterans, local veterans, or even just the community in general? For, for veterans, this is something that is very overwhelming. We have been desirous of a cemetery in Orange County that just, just for veterans for quite a long time. Uh, when in 1999 it was announced that the El Toro base was going to close, MCAS El Toro, we, a number of us began writing letters then suggesting that there should be a military cemetery. So this campaign has been going on since 1999. 
for quite a long time, we were just voices crying in the wilderness mm -hmm. until recently when there was a redevelopment section in the park which gave us the opportunity to again come in and represent ourselves in our interest to get a cemetery. Yeah. That's great. Um, so how exactly did the veterans get the funds for this project? Well, the funding for cemeteries comes from a Veterans Administration grant program that already exists. The Veterans Administration recognizes that they cannot construct cemeteries fast enough for the demand from veterans that are passing. So they have an existing grant program that entitles states or tribal entities to get, receive full funding to build a veteran's cemetery. So as we started down this process, we pretty much knew already in advance that we had the money in hand to build the cemetery. Yeah. We just needed a place to put it. Yeah, and we know that Orange County is a hub for um, a lot of military bases and a lot That's of and home to a lot of veterans. Um, why is this taking so long for the cemetery to come into play and um, pass this law? I think that there were just a lot of other interests that were that were in play. As you know, Orange County land is, is expensive, in demand. Homes mm -hmm. will get built probably before anything else. Mm -hmm. So finding a spot for a cemetery, a veteran cemetery in Orange County was the real challenge. Mm -hmm. So this is a very complicated project. When can we expect the groundbreaking to happen? Well, right now we have passed through, and I, I want to thank the City of Irvine for voting unanimously to approve the site. Uh, of 125 acres of the Great Park. Along with that, that allowed us to get AB 1453, which was put in place by, Assem by Assemblywoman Sharon Quirksilva, to pass through the California legislature unanimously. There was not a single no vote in the entire process, so it is bipartisan, uh, very, very enthusiastic support. The governor signed the bill, mm -hmm. of course, and he did make a visit down to El Toro to congratulate everyone for the bipartisan effort wow. that we're finally going to have this cemetery that's for, for veterans in Orange County. Yeah, that's, that's awesome. Amazing. That's really awesome. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for your service and your time here today. Thank you very yeah, much for having you. me. Thank you. Appreciate it. Okay. A, re a recent wave of violent school threats have caused more schools to be on high alert. Carly is outside of Fountain Valley High School, one of the latest schools to be targeted with a bomb threat. Carly, what more can you tell us? That's right, ladies. Suspension, expulsion, and even prison. That's the hefty price tag you pay for a bomb threat, even if it is just a prank, which was the case here at Fountain Valley High School and many other schools across the country. Text message, email, social media. The main sources for the bomb threat trend targeting schools. Students hide behind private emails and sites like Twitter, sending anonymous threats. Students often use threats as a joke, but even more often they're caught by authorities. Even Yik Yak, an anonymous social media app, doesn't stand for threats of any kind, saying they take threats to safety very seriously. I definitely think that they should take that, they should take that more seriously and kind of ban that app because I think high schoolers are not that mature and they don't know when the joke is not funny anymore. But knowing they may get caught, students still rebel. In the end, no matter the motive, all threats are taken seriously and are usually resolved. Besides schools offering cash rewards for information on threats, authorities are creating top secret tactics for tracking online anonymous threats. And though these threats range from elementary to university level, one thing is for certain. School administrations are fed up with the constant disruption of classes. Reporting from Fountain Valley, I'm Carly Danner, Chapman News. Thanks, Carly. Hopefully these disruptions are minimized and students become aware of the consequences of these kinds of threats. UC students may face a 5% increase in tuition and fees for the next five years. An alternate plan from Governor Jerry Brown would increase state funding by 4% if current tuition stays the same. The policy to increase tuition would create a $130 million in revenue, which would allow 5,000 more students into school. It would also help maintain the 55% of students who have already had their statewide fees covered. The decision will be made next week at UC San Francisco. Newport Beach's City Council voted Wednesday to name Newport's lifeguard headquarters after Ben Carlson, the Newport Beach lifeguard that was drowned in July trying to rescue a civilian. During July's big surf, Carlson jumped into the water to rescue a swimmer in distress near Tower 15, but the pair was hit by a 10 to 15 foot wave. Lifeguards tried to help rescue Carlson, but were unsuccessful. The other swimmer survived. Friends and family are also currently working on a statue to honor the late lifeguard. And after the break, 
Orange County walks to spread awareness and put an end to ALS. Coming up on Chapman News, find out how this little guy got a hospital gown and why tons more are coming to Orange County just in time for the holidays. Season, and I'm going to show you exactly what weather to expect for a trip to the orchard. Stay with us. You're to watching Chapman News. I, yeah, I want those. and Google are the latest companies to join the fight against Ebola. Facebook users are prompted by a message at the top of their news feeds to help stop Ebola by donating funds to nonprofits like the Red Cross. Facebook CEO Mark Zuckerberg donated $25 million to the Center for Disease Control Foundation back in October. Google has also joined the fight, prompting users with a message, for every dollar donated, Google will donate $2. Ebola is not only affecting people in Africa anymore, it's affecting people in the United States and um, social media is such a huge thing for the young generation so I feel like um, it's a very good marketing tool to get young people involved and uh, knowledgeable about Ebola. Remember the ALS Ice Bucket Challenge? Well, Orange County is taking the next step by walking to defeat this disease. Carly Greer has a story. The popular Ice Bucket Challenge has generated a lot of awareness for Lou Gehrig's disease, making this year's Orange County Walk to defeat ALS bigger than ever. Over a thousand people filled Irvine Great Park on Saturday morning to raise money for the ALS Association. Even Man's Best Friend joined together with their owners to walk. The park was filled with signs and pictures to show support or remembrance of a loved one who has suffered from ALS. And uh, we're walking for my dad who passed away last year. Um, we had ALS for five years. And, uh... Vendors lined the walkway and participants enjoyed food and live music before and after the 5K. Even though the walk was a day full of fun activities, for some participants it really hit close to home. For me it's personal because, because I, I miss my dad and I want to help create a future without ALS and I want to make sure that people with ALS have the funds to be and the um, ability to be cared for in different ways and I want them to do research to find a cure. So. The ALS Association has raised over 88.5 million dollars and Ice Bucket Challenge donations alone, all going to a worthy cause. Reporting from Irvine Great Park, I'm Carly Greer, Chapman News. In addition to the Ice Bucket Challenge donations, the 2014 Orange County Walk to Defeat ALS raised $291,000. To learn more about how you can help create a world without ALS, visit ALSA.org. Music and charity go hand in hand for Chapman Radio as the first ever CD drive comes to campus early next week. The number one online college radio station is the nation, in the nation is partnering with Chalk to give away CDs for students. Chapman Radio has a large collection of CDs given to them over the years that they are willing to put up for grabs. Students can also contribute to the cause by purchasing the CDs for a price they feel is right. All proceeds will be donated to Chalk. We work with a lot of music promoters and we get CDs mailed in like four or five every single week. And basically they've just added up like over years. We have like over a hundred CDs in the station right now. And us as staff, we're just saying, you know, We've never done a charity event or anything like that, so why don't we give away these CDs and then people can pay whatever price they think is fit for the CDs, and then all the money will go to the children's hospital. The CD drive will be taking place in the Ottawa Piazza on campus both Monday and Tuesday from 2 p.m. to 5 p.m. A special kind of fairy is delivering gifts, not just for the holidays, but year-round. Maddie Bader reports from Orange.
Wishers and Dreamers designs and delivers free doll gowns to children with illnesses. The co-founders are sisters Trish and Pamela, nicknamed Wisher and Dreamer. They get all materials on a volunteer basis from what the sisters call sewing, postage, and fabric fairies. Trish is a breast cancer survivor. She and her sister started Wishers and Dreamers to give back to the medical community. Maddie was a girl that I uh, sponsored a baby doll uh, for her because she was suffering from a brain tumor. So I sent that to Maddie, and my sister Trish and I I were trying to figure out a way to give to other children but not have something so expensive to give. And my sister came up with the hospital doll gown. So we sent the first one to little Maddie in Georgia, who I had never met. Unfortunately, Maddie passed away uh, about a year ago this November. And um, But she did inspire us, and uh, because of her, This has all been created and we send to other children. Each gown is made by hand with love and hope, sent in a little note to each child. The fairies have been at work for about 16 months now and gowns have been sent around the United States as well as Canada, the UK, Switzerland, Australia, and Mexico. Now some children are even excited to go to their doctor's appointments to show off their dolls new gowns. Some children have even started collections. Wishers and Dreamers recently donated gowns to the oncology floor of the Children's Hospital of Orange County. The gowns will be a part of the upcoming holiday store where parents can come and choose free gifts to wrap for their children staying in the hospital during the holidays. From Orange County, I'm Maddie Bader, Chapman News. Check out the Wishers and Dreamers Facebook for their monthly giveaway where you can win a special themed gown each month. This month's theme is a turkey dress. How cute is that? (laughs) That one's adorable, but did you see the space dress. Wow, that is so cute. It's got little like astronaut monkeys on it. It's the cutest adorable. Thing ever, ever. Aww, I want a matching one. You insure your house, your car, and even your jewelry, but find out what the latest insurance trend is. Reporter Charlotte Gabois with the story. Now there is a new way to ensure a student athlete's success. Education Protector Group is an insurance firm that will insure high school athletes that have verbally agreed to a scholarship for a sport. Ed Pro, as they call themselves, found a gap between athletes who have verbally committed to a college but got hurt and still being able to continue to pursue higher education. Newport Beach parents are feeling the financial pressure. I have two boys. Um, I've got a freshman at Notre Dame, University of Notre Dame playing football, a lineman, and I have a junior in high school at Corona Del Mar. He's a quarterback tight end. With college tuition at an all-time high, student athletes rely on scholarships to go to top universities. After my oldest went to college, we saw the benefits of what a scholarship can do for athletes and really felt that, you know what, we needed a little bit of a cushion in case something does happen. EdPro offers a fee for their services, much like any other type of insurance that is offered. You pay a monthly or yearly fee if damages do indeed incur, EdPro will pay for the scholarship of the student. EdPro explains their policies in detail on their webpage where families can browse and see if insurance is right for their situation. EdPro treats a student's talent just like any other asset you would insure under normal circumstances. Unfortunately, kids are one injury away from getting hurt and losing their scholarship, so it was really a peace of mind. You weigh the pros and cons, and it really was to our benefit. Parents agree that having a plan B is often necessary when dealing with variable situations. Unfortunately, the downside is that if no injury does indeed take place, you could be in the hole a couple thousand dollars. But that shouldn't stop any student from going to college. Here in Orange, I'm Charlotte Gadbois, Chapman News. Insurance is offered for high school juniors and seniors in one and two year intervals while they are still in high school. Rates are gauged on the amount of money students are given as scholarships or grants. Visit educationprojection.com for more information. Chapman University's Dodge College of Film and Media Arts now ranks fourth for the, in the nation for film schools. According to College Factual, Dodge was ranked fourth because of its success in graduate programs, average starting salaries, and student loan default rates. Dodge College offers nine different majors and five ma- minors. The film school has ranked ahead of the film schools ranked ahead of Dodge are USC, NYU, and UCLA. And it is starting to finally feel like fall, and Thanksgiving's only two weeks away. It's about time that it gets a little cooler. I know. I'm rocking the sweater dress right now because it was cold outside, and I was like, I need to have the sweater dress. I got my pumpkin spice latte this morning. It was perfect. I dig it. Jasmine, what, what can we expect for weather this week? 
Well, ladies, it looks like we're finally starting to see some of that fall weather with cooler temperatures and cloudy skies and a slight chance of a drizzle this afternoon. If you take a look at our Orange County weather forecast, you'll see some beautiful numbers in the 60s with 68 all the way up in Westminster to 66 down in San Clemente. If you take a look at our Orange County, our Southwest region forecast, you'll see some beautiful numbers that are also around the mid 60s to the early 70s with 71 in Santa Barbara and 70 in Anaheim, which looks like it'll be beautiful weather for Orange, uh, for Disneyland this weekend. If you take a look at our five-day weather forecast, we got a slight chance of a drizzle this afternoon with cloudy skies all throughout the weekend. And once the week starts back up, you'll see warmer weather and clearer skies. Now, I know it's going to be a cool weekend, but this weekend is also the beginning of apple picking season. Bundle up and head on over to Ukaipa where you can um, pick apples at Riley's Apple Orchard this Saturday. It's going to be some beautiful weather with cloudy skies around 12 and later on in the afternoon, but 2 p.m. is going to be just perfect for, the per for picking the perfect apple. Head, um, head on over to pick apples or to get, up some, get some decorations for those Thanksgiving festivities. Now, there's going to be a big game for Chapman Panthers this weekend, this Saturday actually, at Westminster versus Westminster. Sun sets at 4.49 p.m. with kickoff at 7 p.m. to a slight breeze of 60 degrees. Sammy, what else can we look forward to for our Chapman Panthers this weekend? Yeah, coming up, Chapman football looks to take home their first Sky Act title. Basketball is already turning heads with their All-American on their roster. Plus, the Angel season is over, but their players are still making headlines. We've got all of that and more coming up for you next on the Best Campus Sports Show. happen with little or no warning and often occur while you are away from home. Be ready for emergencies by registering your alternate phone numbers, cell phones, and email addresses at alertoc.com. You will receive alerts when an emergency occurs near your workplace or neighborhood. Back. I'm Sammy Harrelson and you're watching the Best Campus Sports Show. In perhaps the biggest game in Chapman Athletics history, the Chapman football team was just one win away from their first ever Skyhawk title when they took on Redlands this past Saturday. It's going to be a fight all four quarters. I can, I can guarantee that. I'm excited though. The stage is set, baby. At home, the Bulldogs drew first blood. 27-yard touchdown pass from Kevin Russell to Sam Angelo. But the Panthers would strike back. Michael Leahy, he hurdles a couple defenders there to get the first down, and that would eventually set up the McKibbins run for the second score of the game. He would finish with three touchdowns and 206 yards on the night. To the second half, Bulldogs down 31 to 20. They try to creep back. Russell with the bubble screen to Steven Rodriguez, who takes it down to the three, and that's when Bobby Brown would find the end zone. They cut the Panthers' lead to four. Now, there's a big play, Bulldogs with no timeouts left. 
Under two minutes to go and Jeremiah McKibbins converts a big third down. Then it's celebration time for the Panthers. Panthers with their first ever Skyhawk title as they defeat Redlands 31 to 27. And most importantly, they earn a spot in the D3 playoffs. We met up with the team after their big win. Awesome, totally awesome. Uh, I, I, I can't even begin to put it in words how great it is for our coaching staff, for our players, for the university. What an absolute blessing. I just think of a legacy. I just think of a legacy that these, uh, that all these players built and um, just, it just feels great. Once that clock hits zero and you realize, wow, I am, I'm the conference champion, it's, there's, words can't describe how that feels. I can't believe it. I feel, I feel so blessed right now, honestly. It's, it's amazing. It's a great feeling. It's one of the real great things that has happened to me in my lifetime to be able to share it with a special group of people. Chapman University has had many All-Americans, but never won on the basketball team. Colin Zaversnick heads into this season as a member of the D3Hoop.com's preseason All-American team. The senior guard is the first Panther in Chapman's history to receive this award. Zaversnick led the Skyak champion team last year with 18.7 points per game, making him one of three Chapman players with over 500 points in a season. The senior has led the team in both three-point shooting and free throw percentages during his career. It's been a big week for Zaversnik, but he continues to put all of the focus on his team. I'd say I got that because of my teammates, really. You don't want to like let your teammates down in a sense where if they're working hard, you want to work hard too. If they're showing up at practice every day, bringing it up every single time, every defense or offensive possession, you want to be the same and say that you're trying to get everybody better. The Panthers tip off their season tonight at 7 in the Bren Center against the UC Irvine Anteaters. As they say in the movie Angels in the Outfield, it can happen, and it sure did for Angels outfielder Mike Trout, who was crowned American League MVP yesterday. The 23-year-old centered fielder was unanimously voted the MVP of the league. He is one of the youngest players in baseball history to win the honor. Trout has made the top two on MVP ballots for all three seasons of his career. He joins Mickey Mantle, Yogi Berra, and Hal Neuhauser in this category. This is Trout's first MVP award, but it may very well not be his last. Big week for Chapman Sports, and be sure to catch the Panthers' last regular season game tomorrow at Whittier. Then, next week is playoffs. Their opponent is to be announced. That's all we have for you today. Alex, what's going on in entertainment? Find out which Broadway hit has made its way to Orange County Sagerstrom Center of the Arts. That and more coming up next on Chapman News. You're watching Chapman News, Orange County's news leader. Welcome back to Chapman News. Hey, Melanie, do you know what day it is? Oh, it's Friday, girl, and I'm so excited for this weekend. We should totally hang out. Yeah, definitely. Alex, do you have any ideas of what we can do, where we can go? Well, guys, the Beach Boys will be performing in Dana Point tomorrow evening at the inaugural Goodwill Gala at the Laguna Beach Cliffs Marriott. Actor John Stamos will be a guest drummer for the band, as he has done throughout the past 30 years. Tickets from the gala benefit the Goodwill of Orange County and a specialized gym in Santa Ana for people with disabilities. The event kicks off tomorrow at 5 p.m. for a VIP reception for top-level sponsors, where they will get a private sound check with the Beach Boys before they perform. 
Get ready for Orange County. Get ready, Orange County, because the Sagerstrom Center for the Arts is debuting another Broadway hit. The revival of the 1970s classic Pippin features an acrobatic troupe of performers led by the charismatic leading player. The ensemble cast tells the story of Pippin, a young prince who longs to find passion and adventure in his life. Stopping at the Sagerstrom for a two-week period, the national tour feature, features Pippin veterans such as John Rubenstein and daughter of Desi Arnaz and Lucille Ball, Lucy Arnaz. Pippin will be at the Sagerstrom through November 23rd. And the Governor Awards is known as one of the most glamorous events of the year. And this week's Hollywood highlight, I'm rounding up the best dressed of this year's red carpet arrivals. Oscar winner Reese Witherspoon embraced her inner Elle Woods, donning a fabulous future frock along with matching lips. And here's, here's Michelle Monaghan in a Grecian-inspired J. Mandel color block gown, also looking pretty in pink. And with a more mod look, Zendaya Coleman stunned in a black and white Christian Serrano number with a pop of red. And for our best dressed man, there was one who trumped them all. The Theory of Everything star Eddie Redmayne looked dashing in a tux. And with the holidays finally here, I thought I'd leave you guys with a few of my steps to a Thanksgiving that will keep you stuffed till next year. Check it out. Thanksgiving is right around the corner, and sure, mashed potatoes and stuffing are great, but no Thanksgiving dinner would be complete without the turkey. Fry it, grill it, or roast it. Turkey, here we come. Mashed potatoes, stuffing, and vegetables, it's all about the sides. Sure, the turkey's great, but I'm all about the dessert. After the shopping, time to cook. And now for a little Thanksgiving decor. Well, those are my steps to a perfect Thanksgiving. And let me tell you, I cannot wait to eat that pumpkin pie. Melanie, Nicole, back to you guys. Donna Care in New York came to Orange County, but not just for fashion. Kelly Moody has a report, and she spoke to Donna Karen's woman who inspires honoree. Donna Karen New York fashions value artistic excellence and community. That's why Donna Karen celebrates eight women who inspire around the U.S. Vice Chair of Sagerstrom Center for the Arts, Betty Wang, was honored this last week. I am amazed that I'm being chosen because there's so many other eligible ladies in Orange County that's much better than me. So I'm really, really honored. Center President Terry Dwyer shared Betty's devotion to Sagerstrom and the arts. She's chaired one of our most successful candlelight galas ever, our annual gala that supports education programs at the center. She's a beloved and devoted board member. She's generous philanthropically and with her time. She's just, I can't imagine anyone that cares more about the arts or about the community than Betty Wong. Betty couldn't stop there either. She turned her honor into a philanthropic fashion show at Anki at South Coast Plaza, featuring styles from Donna Karen's line. Betty shared with me that after just two rehearsals, models walked this runway. She wanted to make sure that it was mothers and their daughters modeling Donna Karen's clothing to show that Donna Karen's clothes are meant for everyone other than just models on magazines. After the show, attendees moved to the Donna Karen boutique inside the mall to view more of the featured fashions, all in the spirit of the arts. Betty shared that she has fun with philanthropy and her work won't stop here. I want to do better. I want to do more. I want to have more challenge. Uh, I want to contribute more to the community. This is Kelly Moody, Chapman News. Betty Wong raised $2.2 million for arts education last year at the Candlelight Concert and hopes to raise even more in 2015. And that's it for us here. Log on to Chapman website at chapmannews.tv to see all of our episodes, Chapman Newsies bios, and top headlines. And make sure you also follow us on Facebook, facebook.com slash Chapman News, Twitter and Instagram at Chapman News, and YouTube at youtube.com slash Chapman News.
So this weekend, are we down for our plans or? What? Oh yeah, we're hanging out for I'm sure. I'm excited. I can't uh, wait. For sure, we're not going to the beach though because it's okay. gonna be it's gonna be cold. Probably a and I'm bit not chilly. down for that. Yeah. I'm not about that cold weather yet. Well, that does it for us here at Chapman News. I'm Nicole Moy. And I'm Melanie Diarco. Keep on keeping on, Orange County.